Hey everyone, before I get this video started about the Fourth Crusade, I'd like to tell you about how you can Deus Volt your way into your own crusade in the modern world thanks to this video's sponsor, March of Empires. Instead of wasting thousands on buying armor, a horse, a boat, and likely your life if you suddenly decide to seize Jerusalem in the modern world, you should instead download March of Empires on your mobile device or PC and Deus Volt in the comfort of your own home. March of Empires lets you build up your forts and armies, waging war with your enemies, and all without having to put on 100 pounds of armor. You can also build up your alliances, and if you think being a king is lame, you could always be a czar or sultan instead. The possibilities are nearly endless with this game, so be sure and download March of Empires for free in the App Store, Google Play, or on Windows PC today. Now let's get back to the 100 pound set of armor and seizing Jerusalem, except instead of Jerusalem, the Crusaders decided to go a completely different route and conquer Constantinople. They removed the Byzantine Empire and temporarily divided up its territory and set up a new Latin Empire in its place for the next half century or so. All of this was because of the Fourth Crusade. So the Fourth Crusade is one of the more unique crusades, mainly because they attacked a nation outside of the Holy Land. Okay, they've done that before. They attacked a Christian nation outside the Holy Land. Okay, they've done that before too. They attacked a Christian nation outside the Holy Land that hired them in the first place. That wasn't done before? Okay, cool. So basically the Crusades happened at all because of the Byzantines. The Seljuks took their land and asked the Western Church for help. The Pope just decided to up the stakes a little bit and add the liberation to the Holy Land for their list of things to do. However, just because the Byzantines were hiring them didn't mean they got along. For one thing, the Byzantines caused a huge rift in the Roman Catholic Church just 150 years before the Fourth Crusade, forming the the Eastern Orthodox Church. So essentially, they were still considered heathens, and they also weren't helping with the Holy Land bit of the Crusades. Once the Crusaders helped beat back the Seljuks in Turkey, they moved on to the Holy Land while the Byzantines were content with their tiny gains they got back, and they were glad that their enemy was forever weakened. So as time went on, the Crusaders had even less of a reason to want to be on the Byzantines' good side. Another factor was trade. The Byzantines had a lot of good trade in the Mediterranean, especially since their capital of Constantinople was the most important, important trade city in the region. The main leading country in the Fourth Crusade was Venice. Venice was building a trade empire of its own in the Mediterranean, and the Byzantines were their chief rival in the eastern half of the sea. But if there was a catalyst to it all, it was likely the Latin Massacre. In 1182, the Roman Catholic population of Constantinople was massacred by an Orthodox mob. Tens of thousands were slaughtered or sold into slavery, the true number not being known, but this was an absolute outrage for the Catholic world. By 1202, when the Fourth Crusade began, there were plenty of people who remembered these events freshly in their minds. So while the Fourth Crusade was a face-palming stupid event in history that arguably led to the permanent decline of the Byzantine-slash-Eastern Roman Empire, it's not so unthinkable with all these factors in mind. But what was their official reason for being there? Well, we once again have the case where two people are competing for the throne, so one side stupidly invites a giant mercenary army to help them. Without making this too complicated, essentially the Crusaders supported one prince, but the prince was deposed, and then killed, and so the Crusaders were upset. Why? Because now they couldn't get paid. If there's one mistake that is really constant in history, it's the mistake that they didn't pay their giant mercenaries, and so they decide to take over the place. By 1204, the Crusaders took Constantinople, and they sacked the city. What did they do then? They established a new empire, of course. They still called themselves Romans, but historians call this empire the Latin Empire. A weird collection of feudal states were set up that in theory were loyal to the main state in Constantinople, but the Byzantine Empire was too vast for them to completely conquer. So there were three areas left over that became Byzantine successor states, Epirus, Nicaea, and Trebizond. These areas would try to compete to take back the Byzantine throne for themselves. At first, the Pope wagged his finger at the Crusaders for doing a horrible thing, but then suddenly gold was sent to him that the Crusaders looted from the city, and suddenly he changed his mind and decided to recognize this new empire. What's more interesting, though, is how the Latin Empire ended. 
For one thing, they had enemies on all sides, such as the Seljuks, the Bulgarians, and so on, and so they declined quickly. But then they also had those three rival Byzantine successor states, which were also gobbling bits and pieces from their land and trying to take Constantinople back. So who was going to take Constantinople back? Well, eventually Nicaea would be the one to retake Constantinople in 1261, restoring the Byzantine Empire and ending the Latin Empire. So ultimately, the Latin Empire was rather weak and short, but this whole chain of events was enough to forever weaken the Byzantines. Venice was now the dominant trading nation in the area. The Byzantines were back, but forever weakened, making it easier for the future Ottoman Turks to finally end them once and for all in less than two centuries. Those other Byzantine successor states, they actually lived on for a while. In fact, the Empire of Trebizond actually outlived the Byzantine Empire by a few decades. But, in the end, it's safe to say that the Fourth Crusade was probably the most unique crusade, especially when looking at the main nine crusades that we typically talk about. Overall, the Fourth Crusade began the timer that would count down the Byzantine Empire's destruction. Thanks for watching the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Also, special thanks to March of Empires for sponsoring this video. It was great working with them, and frankly, playing as a czar does sound like a lot of fun. So I will see you guys next time.